Hello everybody, Mum is going to read you a story, Tokoyo and the Sea Serpent, or Tokoyo. A very long time ago in Japan, there was a young girl called Tokoyo. She lived with her father, Oribe Shime, who was the emperor's favourite samurai warrior. Tokoyo's father loved her very much and taught her the ways of the samurai, how to fight with a dagger, shoot with a bow and arrow, ride a horse, and, above all, to protect the weak and be brave and loyal. Tokoyo dreamed of being a samurai like her father. When Oribe Shime was away serving the emperor, Tokoyo would go swimming with the Ama, women who dive deep under the sea to find pearl oysters, sea snails and other beautiful shells. One day the emperor suddenly fell ill and Tokoyo's father was called upon to visit him in the palace. The samurai tried to comfort the emperor, but he could see that the royal leader was no longer himself. His mysterious illness had made him very weak and confused. Losing his senses, the emperor turned against Tokoyo's father and banished him to the faraway islands of Oki. The samurai had no time to say goodbye to Tokoyo, who was left behind. For days, Tokoyo roamed around her empty house, crying for her lost father. The islands of Oki were so far away and she didn't know if he would ever return. Although she was still very sad, one day Tokoyo stopped crying. This'll get me nowhere, she said to herself. She dried her tears and decided that the only thing to do was go and find Oribe Shime. My father is a loyal samurai warrior and I will show the emperor he has made a mistake. So Tokoyo sold all their possessions and taking only her dagger and some food, set off across the countryside of Japan towards the islands of Oki. After many weeks, she finally came to the edge of the Western Sea. She could see the islands in the far distance, but the local fishermen wouldn't ferry her across the water. It is forbidden to visit the islands of the Banish, they told her, and in any case, the seas are haunted. We dare not take you over in our boats. Tokoya was disappointed, but like a samurai, she was brave and determined and wouldn't give up easily. I will have to go alone, she thought. That night, Tokoyo found an old rowing boat and under cover of the silky darkness began to row herself across the water to the nearest island. When she was about halfway across, she sensed a strange silence. She looked around and thought she saw ghosts floating above the water. They were the spirits of people once banished to the islands. Turn back now, they whispered in warning. Although Tokoyo was frightened, she shut her eyes tight and kept on rowing. As the dawning sun began to creep up into the sky, turning the water from inky black to gold, she finally made it to the shore of the nearest island and the ghost dissolved in the light of day. She hauled her boat up onto the sand and began her search of the island. Tokoyo wandered across the island for many days, but no one could tell her where her father was. Finally, exhausted after a long and fruitless search, she sat down under a tree at the top of a cliff and buried her head in her hands. As Tokoyo sat there, unsure what to do next, she heard someone crying. Shielding her eyes from the late evening sun, she saw a young girl in a white dress being dragged to the edge of the cliff by a priest. No, stop, what are you doing, Tokoyo cried, running after and grabbing the priest's arm to stop him. You must be a stranger here if you do not know the terrible curse on these islands, the priest replied. An evil sea serpent lives here in a cave beneath the ocean. The serpent will whip up terrible storms and destroy us all if we don't sacrifice a young girl to it every year. Beyond the cliff, the deep sea was crashing against the shore. Tokoyo remembered the samurai code of courage her father had taught her. I will go to the sea serpent instead, she said. Tokoyo put on the girl's white dress and clenched the blade of her dagger between her teeth. Then taking a deep breath, she dived into the foaming water below. Tokoyo was rewarded now for all the time she'd spent swimming with the Amar women. After a few strong kicks, she found herself at the bottom of the sea by the serpent's cave. Outside the cave, she saw a small statue of the emperor. She picked it up and tucked it into her belt thinking she could use it as another weapon. As she did so, the serpent swam out of its cave and seeing Tokoyo lunged towards her. But Tokoyo was too quick. She twisted out of the serp serpent's way, landing a blow with her dagger right in its eye as it thundered past. 
She powered back to the surface for another gulp of air, then dived down again. The half-blind monster was no match for the brave and determined samurai girl, and Takoyo quickly outwitted it, striking a fatal blow deep into its evil heart. She then swam back to the shore, dragging the dead piece behind her. The priest and the young girl couldn't believe their eyes. No one has ever fought the sea serpent before, the priest said. You've saved us all. T Tokoyo returned to the village and everyone came out to celebrate. But even though she was proud of what she'd done, Tokoyo did not smile. Why are you sad? asked the young girl. My father, Oribe Shime, has been banished to these islands, but I cannot find him anywhere, Tokoyo exclaimed. The young girl's eyes widened and she ran over to the priest and whispered in his ear. The priest led Tokoyo to one of the huts in the village and there she found her father. He hugged her tightly, crying with joy and incredibly proud of his courageous daughter. After a few days, Tokoyo and her father left the island of Oki and began their long journey home. When they returned, they discovered that the emperor had recovered from his strange illness. So they went to the palace, hoping that he would remember his brave samurai warrior. What is that? asked the emperor when he saw them pointing to the statue in Tokoyo's hand. Tokoyo told him how she had defeated the sea serpent and taken the statue of the emperor from outside its cave. All the emperor's advisers started talking excitedly. They had heard that a strange curse on a figure of the emperor was what had caused him to lose his senses. When Tokoyo killed the sea serpent and took the statue, the curse must have been broken. Upon learning what had happened, the emperor said Oribe Shime could return to the palace immediately. He rewarded Tokoyo by allowing her to serve as a samurai alongside her beloved father. She spent many more happy days swimming deep in the ocean, but luckily she never saw another sea serpent. And that's the end. Bye. Bye.